Is meditation the secret to Tiger success? Did Tiger Woods actually hypnotize himself? These are some questions that we're going to answer today in this short podcast clip from Scott Fawcett. If you don't know, Scott Fawcett is the creator of Decade Golf, which is an unbelievable course management system that will help you make better decisions on the golf course. I had a chance to speak with Scott on the podcast. I wanted to share this clip with you because I think it will give a lot of insight on how Tiger is able to stay mindful and what you can do to master your mind on the course. But, but part of that is his dad is a Green Beret and his mom is a Buddhist who he was, you know, when he, when he was in the car wreck out in LA a couple of years ago, he was out there doing uh, playing lessons with celebrities. Mm -hmm. And so the day before he was actually with Jada Pinkett Smith yep. and she said on like the fifth hole, she, you know, it's a 20 minute video. It's fantastic. But like on the fifth hole, you know, when you're out there, you just seem like you're in this calm meditative state. And he's like, well, that's exactly what it is. She's like, what are you? He's like, well, I'm definitely out there just trying to be in a meditative state. And she's like, oh, that's so cool. I thought so. And then a few holes later, they've got like a snack bar set up and they're just sitting there talking. And she says to him, you know, let's get back to that meditative state. Like what, what are your hobbies outside of, oh, no, she's like, well, what are your hobbies outside of golf? And Tiger says, you know, I love free diving. And she goes, well, what, you know, like how deep do you go? And he's like, I don't know, like 80 feet. And she's like, oh, wow, you're a real free diver. Like, you're not just going down 10 or 15 feet. And she's like, well, why do you like that? And he goes, well, it circles back to that meditative state. Right. You know, you get down there 80 feet and you get yourself in a problem. You'd better be able to control your breathing and your heart rate or you're not going to make it. Yeah. And, you know, so it's just practice. She goes, oh, wow. Well, you know, how did the meditation start? He's like, oh, you know, my mom, she, her Buddhist background, that's where I started. And she's like, well, how long have you been meditating? And his answer was very informed because he just kind of smirked. And he's like, when I was born? So this is what he's been doing since he was basically born. You factor that in with his dad's green beret antics that he threw on him during practice and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely not suggesting do that, but it really was the, the, the perfect storm of making a great golfer. Now, 99% of the time it backfires and the kids and parents don't have a relationship because they've just been too hard on them. But this one worked and it worked out perfectly. You know, you could obviously easily make the argument, well, did it? Because obviously Tiger had his own issues in life and everything from just being too much of a peak performer. But from a golf standpoint, it was pretty much spot on. And But again, this is where it's so interesting is, is you know, I hate Twitter and social media so much, but it does give you more access to all-time great athletes. Jordan, LeBron, there's a guy named um, George Mumford. He's got a book, The Mindful Athlete. And this is the guy that, you know, the great coaches – Pete Carroll, Phil Jackson, Pat Riley, the great players, LeBron, Kobe, Jordan. This guy worked with all of them on meditation. It's like, there you go. Again, I've, I used to be kind of, you know, feel a little sketchy about talking about meditation. So once you've done it enough and you kind of know what you're, so yes, it should be. I do it a couple times a week for sure. I, it would be great to do it every day, but I've done some other stuff where I, I like, I know the point. Um, now again, it would be better to do it more often, but once you understand the point, then, then you've kind of got it again, you can kind of snap into, again, I think people think of like, we used to think that tiger was playing golf hypnotized in the late nineties, early two thousands, yeah. like literally pocket watch hypnotized. Mm -hmm. And now I understand that's not what it is. It's just actually like a moving meditation, like a Tai Chi. But again, so much of this is. You're just trying to recognize, God, I hit it so good on the range and I never can get into the course or just all these dumb things we think is to just recognize them before it spirals out of control. That's the point. And again, you know, I used to do these other apps where it's just follow your breath and whatever. But then Tim Ferriss is another guy that I love. He's he's got a funny quote from one of his podcasts where he's like, I always failed at meditation and Sam Harris is like, well, you can't fail at meditation. First of all, he's like, no, I would because I'd get like two minutes in and they'd just be saying, follow your breath. And I hadn't done it a single time. I'd get all pissed off. I'd slam a pot of coffee and I'd storm out the door. <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> That's the exact antithesis of the point. Right. You, you're supposed to have your brain is supposed to be bombarded with thoughts constantly, but you're trying to recognize them again before they ruminate and again, like I say, Sam's got this just great way that he talks about it. He's like, where if, if, if your mind was somebody else and they just came in your front door and they just mm -hmm. followed you around saying the stuff that you say to yourself all day long, like literally just constantly talking to you <laughs> and also being really negative a lot, you'd be, right. you would kill them. I mean, you would yeah. literally commit murder in 48 hours. A very sane 100%. person would murder this person yep. in under 48 hours. And that's what we're trying to get our brain to stop being. Don't you wish they actually taught useful stuff like that in school? 
Oh, trust me, that is there's I, I, I try to get my kids to do it. And it's just so it's so hard to get these young people to understand. But yeah. it is again, I feel like that's why I try to talk about it so much. It is yeah. the superpower of peak performance and of just honestly living a good life, in my opinion. Yeah. Otherwise, you're pretty much riding around with a terrorist in your head and uh, <laughs> <laughs> literally a terrorist. 